didn't really care for this week's episode of Impact, to tell you the truth. Seemed like a real throwaway show. Uh, really uneventful, very cliche show. We start off with, oh, my favorite segment probably of all time, folks. This was a great segment. Fucking Hulk Hogan coming out. Listen here, brother. I'm going to take more time away from the young guys, dude. You know, 20 minutes of fucking Hogan every single week is getting old as shit. A company that prides itself on, you know, about to be in the future. These guys are the future of the business. Why the fuck do they dedicate the most time to the oldest guy in the business? You know, Hogan, probably the most well-known wrestler of all time. Probably even more well-known and famous than The Rock or Stone Cold. Because it's just a name that is synonymous with professional wrestling. I mean, Hogan is, without a doubt, in, you know, I don't even think it's my opinion. He is the biggest wrestler of all time. But the fact that this guy comes out here and then he claims that Sting is the greatest of all time... He comes out, and, you know, it's all build up for lockdown, but holy shit, it's annoying. You know, you could promote lockdown at different parts of the show. They were promoting it all night with the matches, but fuck. I mean, these guys go beyond what is needed. Too much. Brother, woo! Brother, woo! Brother, woo! It's like that's what the whole fucking show is, it seems like. For a whole half an hour until they get to, you know, the young guys. Then we get our first match is Magnus defeating Daniels. And for some reason, this was a bad match. It was fucking just worthless. Why the fuck is Daniels losing to Magnus? Daniels, who's given the company the best matches over the past couple of months, had that, you know, almost perfect match with AJ Styles just, you know, a couple of months back. And, you know, he has a good match with Jeff Hardy for the title. And he jobbing out the fucking Magnus. Just because it's the UK. Fuck the UK. And fuck Magnus. Who the fuck cares about this guy? I mean, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if the people in the YWC say he's sexy. Because he's got muscles. I mean, who the fuck cares? Daniels might not be, you know, a big jacked up wrestler. But the guy's got more talent. Than almost everybody. He's one of the best. And they have him job out for God knows what fucking reason. Then it's Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. And what the fuck was up with this match? You know, I was saying lately that Joe seemed like he's been getting re-motivated. I don't know what the fuck happened here. They were moving it like fucking two miles per hour here like fucking I, even slower than that it's like fucking watching snails in there fucking worms crawl along the ground like, where the fuck would, <laughs> was the motivation where was the energy you know it's almost like they were running on like uh, 30 minutes of sleep here or some shit fucking uh, tired they looked old they looked just out of shape you know <laughs> like the way they were wrestling like they were out of ring shape or some shit. Why was this sucking so much? It's Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, two guys that are supposed to be the best. Why were they wrestling like shit tonight? And then, you know, then they, they're breaking this match up like it's a great match and they don't want to, you know, it's supposed to be almost like a stalemate, but I don't care. And, you know, Garrett Bischoff and Wes Briscoe, what pathetic. They're not even like tough guys. You can't take them seriously. Coming in, they get thrown out. That's it, pretty much. You know, just garbage. This whole thing was just fucking horrible. It was. Um, then you got uh, the Team UK. You know, this is the fucking just horrendous thing about this. Why was this match so long? I don't know how long it was, but it felt like it was like at least 15 to 20 minutes. Two twins, whatever the fuck they're called, uh... Blossoms, actually. Um, and uh, fucking Party Marty. Party... They're fucking horrible name! Where the hell did they get these guys? And you know, this is the thing. They 
They they take that guy who's like a ripoff of Nigel McGuinness last week, throw him out there. We're supposed to care. It's in the UK, but this shit like wasn't made available to anybody in the US. So, you know, the majority of their audience is in the US, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> don't quote me on that, but whatever the fuck it is. You know, a lot of people are watching here in the U.S. And we don't know who the fuck these people are. You know what I mean? That would be like if they didn't run tough enough in the U.S. And all of a sudden they threw Maven out there. You'd be like, who the fuck is this guy? I mean, you can't just do that. You just can't throw random people on a wrestling show and expect us to cheer. I know a lot of the fucking tards out there in the YWC were doing that all through the whole match, but... This match was boring. It was bad. They faced off against uh, Tara, Gail, Kim, and um, the Jesse, and, and this shit was just uh, it, it, just to top it all off. Fucking uh, Marty Party PD, whatever the fuck his name is, goes sailing out of ring or a suicide dive and nearly kills himself. Why the fuck are they having guys that Taz even said, Taz even blurted it out, they're as green as goose shit. Just flying out of the ring, not even hitting Jesse, hitting the barricade, putting people in danger, almost flying over the barricade and almost decapitating fans at ringside. Why the fuck are they having people who are green as goose shit, as Taz says, go out there and wrestle full-fledged 15 to 20 minute matches? Christopher Daniels isn't even wrestling that long on the card. So why are they giving that much time to these guys? That is not going to make us care about them or like them. It's going to make us fucking hate them. What the fuck is up with this show tonight? It's like like fucking chimpanzees. <laughs> like typed up the fucking match card tonight. Fucking booked this show. It's fucking horrendous. Like seriously. 15 minutes. For fucking jobbers? For fucking guys that they just ripped out of a uh, fucking p local park or some shit? People are sitting there, you know, whatever, having a picnic. Oh, you want to be a wrestler? Okay, you know, and they fucking give them a match for 15 minutes on impact. And then you got uh, James Storm defeating RVD. Okay, this wasn't a bad match. RVD goes for the Terminator with the Van Terminator at the chair. That was kind of cool. I haven't seen him do that in a long time. A decent little match. And finally something decent on here. It wasn't that long or anything. But, uh, you know, okay match. And, you know, I don't really see where this... Why is James Storm facing off against the X Division champion? He's not in the X Division. Shouldn't RVD be working with the young guys? That's what he's supposed to do. I don't know. You know, consistency... Um, then we get our main event. It's Austin Aries uh, and Bobby Roode. Um, mixed bag for this match. You know, it was entertaining. Um, you know, it seemed like... Oh, it's like a, a weird match what they did here. They did a lot of comedy, which was which was some quality comedy. I enjoyed, you know, the, the finger poke. They couldn't decide on who they wanted the finger poke at Doom. It was a clever play on the, you know, the old Nash Hogan thing. Um, back in WCW. That was funny. That was entertaining. I liked it. Um, but, you know, it's like uh, they could have a better match in there. But they did some okay stuff. It was a pretty decent match. Um, the ending with the double count, that was pretty fucking lame, though. And are they seriously going to continue this feud with Chavo Hernandez? You know, I know like they have a rematch clause and shit, but just forget about it, really. I mean... No one likes these guys. It was a terrible idea to even hire Chavo Guerrero, the second-rate Eddie. You know, this guy, if it wasn't for Eddie Guerrero dying, the man would have been released in a couple of months from WWE shortly after becoming Curran White. You know, this guy would have been in an alley somewhere covering himself up with newspapers to keep warm. You know, uh, probably be sent back to Mexico or some shit. He wouldn't even be in his fucking country. You know, it's, I don't want to see this feud. You know, like I said, it would be kind of cool to see them if they actually accomplish that goal, uh, that goal of getting all the belts. You know, that would be um, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, that's never happened before, but, you know, it would be like an interesting conquest. But like I said, Ace and Eights is supposed to, 
you know, be on this conquest. They should probably have the tag titles, the X Division belt, but they don't. You know, it's like, seriously, priorities are all over the place in this fucking company. I want to like it. I want to like, you know, an alternative, but they're making it very hard. Um, then it ends with um, Hogan coming back at you. Know, it's, it's not enough. You know, okay, so this was like the last five minutes of the show, but, you know, Hogan fucking ate up so much time on this show, and then it's more Hogan, Sting, and Bully, right? I hate all fucking three of them. You know, and they're fending off Ace and Nates, you know, with bats so they don't come in the ring. You know, but there's no real contact made. It's like a brawl without the brawling. And, um, the show just lacked a lot tonight. It was, you know, okay in some parts. It wasn't terrible. But I really didn't care for it because it wasn't anything special. I didn't feel like any big happenings happened, you know. They're talking about lockdown. They're supposed to get hyped up for this pay-per-view. They've cut a bunch of pay-per-views, you know, obviously because, you know, they're not doing so well financially. But, um, you know... But people will say this is so they can build it up better. So, there we go. So, you know, we want to build it up better. How about having some quality matches? Show was okay last week. But now it's like, you know, this episode sort of reminded me of how this company was during the summer. Horrible. Uh, so, you know, hopefully WWE, um, WWE TNA is very inconsistent when it comes to quality programming. They could have a good show one week, and the next week it could be fucking horrendous. So, maybe next week it'll be better. Like I said, I'm not going to write off the whole fucking company because of one show. But they really got to get their shit together. Because when they have a, you know, they got to keep a streak of quality going. They can't just keep on having, you know, good show, good show, and sh fucking shit. You know, the show wasn't like completely horrible, but there was a lot of shit on here which was really stupid. Why you would give 15 minutes to some fucking uh, your green goose shit fucking jobbers is beyond me. So yeah, you know, there you go.